resistance. Now the second thing is the problem statement or the opportunity statement. A good or an effective problem statement should have one formula. It is 4W1H. You can see it on the screen. 4W1H. Which is first of all, first W is what? What is wrong or not meeting a customer need? Whom it is impacting? What is the impact? And what can we do now? And H is how big is the problem? So if these four components are mentioned in the problem statement, we would call it as a perfect problem statement. So we'll take certain examples that will clear your questions. But as I said again and again, problem statement or anywhere during the defined phase, we should not mention the potential cause or potential solution because right now we are defining the problem. If you give a, I'll tell you what would happen. If you're writing a business case or if you're writing a problem statement, if you mention that, sir, this is the cause due to that, the employee attrition is very, very high. Let's say he mentioned a cause uh, like no growth opportunities and there is no better increment. Then the leader would say, why we want to do a project? We already know those causes. Go ahead and work on it and show me the result. Thank you for your time. In that case, you will not get an opportunity to work on the project. Even though you have some hypothesis, you have certain assumptions, which you can think is leading to a problem, you would not like to jump the gun because uh, in the black belt project or in the green belt project, we would learn those techniques which would help us to make decisions, which would help us to uh, conclude statistically uh, significantly whether this particular cause has an impact to this one. So that is the logic why we say that we should not mention. Okay. Now let's take an example here. In the last six months, yes, anybody wants to say something? No, no, we were not able to hear, so I thought we just lost connection again. Anyway, okay. I, was, I was just giving you guys some time to understand. Grab the oh. So, uh, in the last six months, this is a problem statement 20% of our repeat customers, not first timers, are late over 60 days paying our invoices. The current rate of late payment is up from 10% in 2014 and represent 30% of our outstanding receivables. This negatively affect our operating cash flow. So I have a question for you. Does this problem statement has cleared the 4W1H test or not? Okay. If I would have compared this problem statement with this problem statement, if you walk up to your project sponsor and say that, sir, I have a problem in hand, no CTQ, nothing, our customers are angry with us and late in paying the bill. Vis a vis this problem statement and this problem statement, do you see a majority of the difference? Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Right, right. He mentioned since when the problem is. He mentioned how big is the problem. He mentioned what is the impact. He mentioned who is getting impacted. And it has mentioned everything. So cash flow is, and you all are sound professional, we all know cash flow is one of the bottom line of any organization. Okay. Although he, although he, if he would have mentioned that how much is a cash flow getting impacted, it would have make a stronger business case, but he or she should have mentioned this in the business case itself. That's why it's not mentioned here. Okay. The difference between problem statement and business case, you should, if you have this question in your mind, I would like to clear that in the business case, we would majorly focus on the, the scope of the project what is a need and what are the consequences. But in the problem statement or the opportunity statement, we 
mention the figures, the fact and figures, and mention the 4W and 1H. So if this is how you are going to draft the problem statement or the opportunity statement, uh, you would certainly be able to make an impact in the eyes of the stakeholder. So let's take a test here. What do you think would be the uh, CDQ hit? Simmerbrick, I have one question. So when you say that for this, but for a problem statement, we are uh, mentioning the facts and figures, and we are doing that four W and one uh, H. But in business case, also you suggested that we need to uh, at least have the uh, you know the historical data when we are talking about the need of the project and some facts and figures mm -hmm. also. So how then uh, the business case and this problem statement when we are mentioning the numbers in both the cases, uh, how they are then different? Like we are almost at the similar kind of an area, right? Yes, yes. So if you have such a scenario where you don't have a lot of things to look at, you can always combine your business case and problem statement together. Okay make it a larger view and mention everything. But if you want to understand from a concept that why we have two different components in the uh, project charter, the business case focus on the overview view, which talks about that. What is this process all about? Why are we doing this project? Wherein you don't want to mention a lot of fact and figures. Okay. But yes, you, it should be ready with you. Because the, the stakeholder first wants to look at what is that opportunity you will be mentioning and mention what would be the consequences of doing it, not doing it now. In the problem mm -hmm. statement, though they have mentioned that what is the impact of doing, not doing it now, but they have not given that kind of a weightage. They have not given a, like that kind of a number here that this would impact uh, maybe 50 million of my cash flow, 100 million of my cash flow. Okay. So if you don't have much impact to mention on if there's only one, then you can combine business case and problem statement. Okay. But in a business case, in a nutshell, it is a need. It is an overview. So it should be in a sequence overview need of doing this project now. And what are the consequences and in the problem statement, how big is the problem? Since when is the problem? Who is getting impacted? how big is the problem and and why it is an urgency to do it now so so that's that's how it, it is mentioned but yes if you want to mention it as a problem statement and a business case together we can do it but in business case we do not mention a lot of factors. okay okay thank you yes so now a question for all of you is what is that ctq which you can see from this problem statement. Improving the payment uh, cycle. Uh, delayed, delayed payment receipts. Delayed uh, payment of invoices. Yeah, number of. I said it the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> so it is delay in paying our invoices. Delay yeah. in paying our payments. Okay. So this is this is one of the CTQs on this the, this particular problem statement is there. So now I'm I'm giving you a scenario. Okay, you can just you all can see it's mentioned here, and below this screen it mentioned the effective problem. So just go through it and see that what is missing out it here. What is missing from this problem statement? The facts and figures, they're saying the average turnaround time has grown. Um, okay, no, it's there. Uh, but it says that it, uh, it has grown by an estimate of seven days, okay. It is, it is staying seven days, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also saw that. <laughs> okay. 
What else? But there are not lot of information. Many applications and uh, like many applications, like how many how many are out of how many application we are talking of how many number of applications so that we can judge that it is a problem. Okay. The numbers are not uh, very clear. Okay. Uh, and the advisors are becoming frustrated. It doesn't say how much percentage of them, as in just advisors, as in what uh, what is the impact, as in how big is the advisor base or something. So the, the impact is not very very clear here. So. Okay. Not only that, uh, yeah, like uh, uh, adding on to your point, uh, it says that when advisors are frustrated because it is leading to delays in the approval. So in the first line, it is shown that it is an estimated seven days, but from what? So now we know that it's a delay and the delayed timeline is seven days. So it is delayed from what timeline? Like that is also not given so that we can compare and understand that what exactly is happening. Okay. The difference is seven days. That that means that the delta value, which is great, problem is seven. So yeah, but we don't know from what to seven. Okay. What? What else? It's already determined as in what is causing the problem. So like, it doesn't need much. You know, it doesn't need a black belt project at all. I mean, at least it's really presented to a, uh, you know. A, Senior managing person will say, "Okay, yeah, then go and do this. Uh, uh, you know, like uh, make sure that they are not half completed. Go and work on that rather than doing for a." Uh, okay. Uh, okay. What else? We are we are missing on one very important point. All the points are correct. There is one more point. Let's see who says it. Maybe you, you all, you might have said it, but I, I couldn't understand. I couldn't hear that. Anything which I have not heard. The increase in the number of callbacks. No. Maybe why? Why they are being? Here yeah, the customer uh, feedback is not mentioned. Okay, the customer feedback is not mentioned. So what percent or what quantity is half completed? Sorry, your voice is breaking. Uh, what what percentage of the applications are half completed? What percentage of the applications are half? Let's let's look at it. Let's look at it. Now now look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here, when you look at the effective problem statement, it clearly it laid out that what is that clearly that what they're facing. So incomplete, the ones which are highlighted in uh, yeah. orange color, you say. Six months, underwriters can't make an accurate determination on coverage, seven day delays and frustration for advisors. So this is a problem where not only the customer is facing an issue from the advisors, the underwriters, the business and everybody is facing an issue. So this clearly- The em employees are also facing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's how when you think from that perspective, your problem statement would be more effective and where you'll be able to articulate in a, in a in very short words rather than making the entire story. And likewise, I mentioned upon investigation, it is determined that many applicants for life insurance are being half completed. And they mentioned a lot of reasons also, okay, that they are generating a call back to the advisor. So this is not required. This is not required. We only need to focus on what the problem is, how big the problem is, who's getting impacted, and why we should work on it. 